And now it's time, and now it's time for another edition of What Would Jello Do? Another idea that deserves revisiting with the spirit of the Occupy movement is good old-fashioned pranks. Detailed in length in one of the great books, and many of these can be done, you know, today, and there's even now a volume two available from research publications. Some of the great ones that I'd heard about or found out about in there, for example, you want to occupy the banks, Abby Hoffman suggested renting a safe deposit box, leaving a dead fish in it, and never coming back. I like that one. And remember those of you who are damn near as old as I am when he threatened to levitate the Pentagon and the Pentagon was afraid he actually would and got all scared and everything? Stuff like that. That's a good one. Then there was the one a few years ago at a great big factory in Savannah, Georgia, where somebody sent a memo around that announced that half the staff would be laid off after lunch and people stopped working the rest of the day just to talk about it. Valuable company time wasted. There's many ways to do this. Call emergency supervisors meetings so they all show up and nobody knows why they're there. Putting out of order signs on key pieces of equipment. That's another one. I also have fond memories for a proposal from British underground zine in 1980 called Pigs for Slaughter of a nationwide lock gluing campaign against a certain evil restaurant chain where they would have to spend their entire morning sawing open their own door in order to get into the building. Of course, keypads are one way to prevent this, but not everybody has keypads. Another great British one from the 60s was in the spirit of the best TV show and one of the best concepts ever, my favorite superhero, Bat Batman specifically the Batman villains. In this case, the spirit of the Joker, where people would break into the police dispatch radios and misdirect the cops to wrong parts of town so they'd miss the demonstrations and other actions. And uh, others, like Earth First, after they turned nonviolent, no more tree spiking, thanks to Judy Berry and others, but instead, yarning. You just put yarn all over the trees so that are slated to be cut down and they don't want to put a saw blade in it. But of course, you can get the yarn, but you see the yarn, so it's not a rude surprise if a spike hits a chainsaw or whatever. That was a good one. The Saturday day of moving accounts out of big banks into smaller banks. There's a positive prank that might wake them up a little bit, especially if it starts cutting into executive bonuses. But I have to say the best one I've heard of in a long time is a good friend of mine I've made music with who grew up in a smaller farm town near uh, the fabled Aberdeen, Washington, where Nirvana came from. There were farm kids in the school system. And one day, one of the farm kids brought a stillborn calf into town and they left it in a woman's bathroom stall at McDonald's. Not all resistance is this much fun, but it can be awfully tempting. A prank a day keeps the dog leash away. <laughs>